Hey, welcome back guys. In this video, we will take a look at async await. So async functions and await keywords were introduced in ECMAScript 2017 edition. So when you pass an async keyword to a function, it returns a promise. And the await keyword waits for the promise to be fulfilled before moving on to the next step. So async await essentially allows you to elegantly work with promises. Now let's take a look at how that works. So I have over here the same function or the promise that we created in the previous video. What we will do is actually create a new function here and I will call this one get API and I'm going to convert this regular function. So this is how typically we create our function, right? We were using this. Now, if I pass in an async keyword over here, this makes this an async function. Now async function requires an await keyword to be added in the actual function. So to do that, what we will do is first of all, call our get to do's. But if you remember from the previous video, this actually returns a promise. So to actually wait for the promise to be fulfilled, we can take advantage of the await keyword. So what this will do is instead of doing the dot then, we can just put await here. It will actually wait for this promise to be fulfilled and give us the resolved value back. So let's see how that works. I will do const rest and then just do equal. And I'm going to try to print the actual value over here. I'll do console.log rest. And then instead of calling get to do's, I will call get API. Now we'll run this over here and then comment this out. So let's run this. Oops, let me just fix this. This is get API. Okay, now let me run this. Okay, so there you go. We actually got the data back. Now I didn't have to do dot then or dot catch or anything. So what's happening is basically we created an async function. And what async function does is in that you can use the await keyword. And await keyword would resolve the actual promise that you're getting back. So we don't have to do dot then here, it, await will itself just resolve. This is, you can think of it as just a syntactic sugar, which basically instead of doing dot then, we can just do this. And here I can have like multiple promises instead of doing get to do's, I can do get users, and I would get the user response back over here. And then I can keep, keep doing await await in like as many promises I want to do. And it would step by step, it will keep giving me the result back and I can take advantage of that and change it to whatever I want to do from that. So I'm going to remove that over here. So here basically if you want to what we were trying was using the data fetch right we can do the same thing here i can just do console log data fetched so it will actually give me the response and then it will give me the data fetch so it would be step by step there you go we got the response and then we got the data fetch so it doesn't really skip to this step right over uh, right away and instead what it does is wait for the response to be come back because await waits for the promise to be fulfilled and then we get the data back so basically this is how you can use async await to work with promises now, a more realistic example of this would be uh, if we go over here and take a look at this fetch API. If you notice, we use this fetch to actually get the data back. So if I run the script, I get this data back, right? And it's using a promise. So the fetch, when you just print it out, it returns a promise. And then they're doing dot then to actually get the JSON back. And then they're doing dot then again to actually get the response back from there. So and which is this particular response. So let's try to convert this into an async function. I'm going to open up the dev tools here. Go to console and here we will create a function. So I can call my function, let's say um, get to do's, and then here I will create an async function. So and then we will just simply create a function over here. Now, inside this, what I'm going to do is first make a call to this particular URL. So I will copy that and do my console. When you make the call to that, you get a response back, right? So I will do response and then print this out or basically actually copy this over here and paste it. And then this will give me a promise back. The fetch returns a promise. So I can do await in the front. So this will resolve the promise and then I will get the actual response back here. So this response is also a promise. And if you notice they're using JSON to actually get the data back. So let's try to add another one over here. So this time I will just do my JSON and I will do again await. I'll do rest.json. So this will give me this JSON data back. And then I will simply return my JSON. Okay, so that's good. So ideally, when we run this, it should give us this data back. I'm gonna hit enter. Then I will do get to do's. If I hit enter right now, it's gonna give me that promise is pending because anytime you call an async function, it returns a promise. So to work with that, we can use await. And then I will do get to do's. If I hit enter, there you go. We got our function back. So this is how like async await actually instead of doing dot then makes it really clean. You can convert it into a nice one function 
and keep using that await get to do's. Now you can imagine if I convert this into let's say get API, pass in a URL as a parameter and then get that. And instead of doing dot then every time there, I have my nice function which will get me the data back. And I can keep using await so that I can get the response back. And this makes the code look a lot more cleaner. So both promises and async await are something that you will see a lot in the modern code bases. But it's up to you which ones to use. You can go ahead with using just promises this way or you can use async await. There is no one particular way of which one we should use. You will see some certain scenarios where async await makes much more sense than to use a regular promise or the scenarios you might just go ahead with use a dot then over there. So anyways, that was a quick overview of how async await works. I hope you understand now how a callbacks async await as well as promises work. So make sure to try this out on your own and create your own async functions and then use await keywords to work with promises and see what kind of response you get back to get a better understanding of how this works. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.